10 days of silence. No talking, no reading, no writing, nothing, no stimulus at all for 10 days. And long story short, because I know that this is something that a lot of you guys watching this are uh, probably wanting to know whether it's something you want to do or to just hear a little bit about someone else's experience doing a 10 day Vipassana meditation retreat. Um, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life and definitely one of the most rewarding. I think about it almost daily and it's three months after I did the retreat. Uh, so yeah, I, if you're at all considering doing it, I couldn't recommend it more. The, the impact it had on my mind and just the way I see the world and so many things. I'm so grateful for that experience and I can't wait to recount it in this video, uh, which I'm gonna try and just shoot completely raw um, I don't want it to be very edited at all, I just want this to be my complete account of why I wanted to do a 10 day uh, silent retreat, how I felt going through those 10 days as well as the build up to the retreat and then how it's kind of the lasting effect it's had on me now three months later. Um, so yeah, it's uh, something I'm really excited to, to go through. Um, but first of all, just in case you don't know, what is a 10 day Vipassana retreat? Um, Vipassana is a Buddhist meditation um, practice. It's quite an intense one, passed down by Buddha himself centuries ago. And, um, and yeah, there's lots of centers around the world now who offer it for free, which is just incredible. This was a free silent retreat, but you donate at the end. And um, part of this, yeah, part of the meditation is a noble silence where you don't speak for 10 days and it's very intense. It's not something to go into, you know, lightly. Um, but I first heard about these probably 10 years ago. I think I'm now 29. And um, I remember meeting someone about 10 years ago who did one. I remember at the time thinking, God, why would you do that? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's funny how, I, it was something I thought I'd probably do, but I do remember thinking, why would you do that? That sounds crazy. And then I've just kind of been confronted by, you know, uh, so many people in the last 10 years who've done it. And every time I'm just like, wow, I really want to do one. I really want to do it. And um, yeah, earlier this year, my friend messaged me saying, oh, you can sign up for the free Vipassana one in, um, in the UK. And I did, and just um, for you guys to know, it's quite uh, difficult to get a place. It's, it's as long as they only uh, do sign ups once a year, but for loads of courses through the year. And um, you definitely want to be on the website within half an hour of it opening. It's not like getting tickets for Glastonbury or, you know, Taylor Swift or something like you, you know, as long as you're on on time, you will get a, you will get a place. Um, but that's how I signed up. I'll leave a link in the description. But I wanted to do it because so many reasons actually. I wonder, you know, if uh, I, I think you guys will probably be able to relate to a lot of these. A big one for me was I'm so aware of the impact of technology on my brain and wanting to limit, um, well, just experience life again without technology and see how it changes things, how I just get my mind back without the distraction, without the dope, would just give it a full dopamine detox. But also I was going through quite a kind of transitional period of my life where I wasn't really doing, I, I'd kind of gone away from the things I wanted to do with my life kind of career wise. And I wanted to delve deep into my mind again, really discover my purpose and my calling and get that gratitude for, you know, for life back. Um, yeah, so, and, in all honesty, all of, I will say all of that, I really feel like I gained from the Sonic Retreat. Um, yeah, so, and I'll explain why. So um, coming up to the actual retreat, which was in May, I hadn't been doing much meditation. I have meditated on and off in my life, but um, I didn't actually meditate coming up to this. I would totally recommend that you do in order to not have such a huge shock when you get into the retreat. But um, I did walk the Camino de Santiago, which was a month walking across Spain. I've actually got videos on that if you guys want to check them out. That was great practice for me. It was great kind of mental training, um, just kind of switching off from technology, walking, you know, just being alone with my thoughts. Um, so yeah, that was my preparation and getting 
into the retreat. So on the 22nd, I got there. Mine was in Hereford in England, which is actually the biggest center for Vipassana in Europe. And um, it was a beautiful center, a really beautiful center. Um, I got there and uh, in this, you know, you walk into reception, you answer some, you've got to fill out the questions on a sheet and it's all like making sure that you understand what this is that you're getting yourself into because it is obviously very intense. You have to know what you're getting yourself into just to, you know, say yes, yes, understand this. And then I was shown my room and I was in a dorm room, but most people are in private rooms. Um, I did have my own kind of curtained off section in this room though, so I did feel like I had my own space. And, uh, and yeah, I got to walk around the center and it was beautiful, really beautiful. There's lots of buildings where, you know, um, the sleeping quarters, there's a big meditation hall, and then a good kind of couple of acres of sort of natural space. So forests, fields, and I was so grateful for that space. And I'll talk about that later. But, um, but yeah, that was the site. And I do recommend getting there a few hours early because I really enjoyed just speaking to the other, um, retreaters let's say so uh, a few of us were there and there was uh, early and there was definitely kind of a lingering feeling of anxiety of you know nervousness because I was thinking oh my god I'm, I'm here I've been there's been so much anticipation for this I was kind of terrified I couldn't couldn't believe honestly that I was going to be silent for 10 days and just to put that into perspective kind of what I was feeling just, I invite you to imagine now, just think back 10 days ago. What were you doing exactly 10 days ago? And now think of all that time in between now and then. Just imagine thinking, I'm just gonna be in this one place for that whole period. I'm not gonna say a word. I'm not gonna be able to read, have my phone, write anything. I can't even look at another person. You're not allowed to look at each other. What you, I say not allowed, obviously, you know, you're not going to get kicked out if you do. But um, you've got to, it's got to be like an experience where you're so not distracted by anything. And I was just thinking, wow. And the others were all thinking the same. But it was, it was just great to speak to others and, you know, understand why people were doing this. And it was very comforting. Um, I, I'm very grateful that I had that to begin with. Um, just a quick drink of tea. Mm. And then, um, so yeah, had a, had a bit of a chat with everyone and then all the men and women are split onto one side each and, um, and they gave us a, deep, a quick brief before, you know, the silence started. And they did say, the officials said, if you don't think, you know, you are ready for this, please leave now. Like once this starts, you won't be able to leave. And it was kind of scary when they said that. Of course you can leave if you want to, and people do, but um, it's really not recommended because honestly, like the mind is like an onion. You know, you've got your top couple of layers uh, of the conscious mind, and then in this meditation, you are unraveling your mind and getting deeper and deeper into your subconscious. And it's a very, it can be a very, you know, there's a lot of difficulties in that. You go to such incredible, moments of peace and then moments of un, you know, uncovering pain in your life and it's it's something that once you start unraveling it you kind of need to ravel it back up again at the end so that's why they very much recommend you do not leave until the end um, but people do and I was glad that they said that actually because it did make me think right I'm here I'm staying I'm not leaving I'm here for the 10 days so um so yeah the the silence started and it was so strange to begin with it def i was you know it was kind of felt like a like a game to begin with it was like oh we're all <laughs> being being quiet and uh yeah we went into the meditation hall and we're taught by sn Gwenka, who is the the buddha um from who's passed away now but um he recorded a lot of his sessions in the 90s and um, that's what we were watching in the meditation hall. And we all had our own pillow kind of in these, you know, we we're all in rows with our own meditation cushion. And um, yeah, so we were taught how to meditate to begin with. And the first three days was just to focus, you know, on the breath, the sensations around your nose. Um, so yeah, we were taught that the first evening and then bedtime was 9 p.m. 
Now, um, the schedule for the days was so intense. It was wake up at 4 a.m. every day and every new part of the day was marked by a gong, um, which was very peaceful to kind of be woken up to. But um, that first day being woken up at four by the gong, I was just like, whoa, I'm here. This feels so strange. What is today going to hold? Where is my mind going to go? Um, it was, yeah, it was a strange, it was strange feeling and it was very real. Um, I remember it so well and uh, so it, the first, from 4 on to 6.30 was meditation, so you could meditate in the hall or in your room. I started off in the hall because I thought that was the best way to begin. And, um, and then after, at 6.30 you'd have breakfast until 8. Then it was meditation again 8 till 11 in the hall, uh, 8 till 11.30. And then uh, lunch at 11.30 till 2, so you had a free period there. And then it was meditation again 2 till 5. Um, tea, five to six, and tea was literally just a piece of fruit and cups of tea, and um, and then it was meditation again from six to nine. So, yeah, just to give you an idea of how the days went from here, day one, you know, it was really hard getting into meditation. Um, as I said, I've you know dabbled with meditation before; it wasn't new to me, but it was fascinating straight away just sitting still for this amount of time for 10 hours a day and seeing you know really seeing what was happening in my mind to begin with for the first couple of days my mind was just so cluttered with things I'm not even conscious about day to day um, you know it would be to begin your your brain is just you're just dying for any kind of distraction for any dopamine at all it was such a detox and um, I was just noticing in the meditation, my mind being pulled away every 10 seconds, you know, 10 seconds, my focus was gone. And it's all part of meditation, you know, it's um, observing your mind doing this and not judging it when it pulls away. Um, and, you know, hour by hour, day by day, your focus gets so much better. And suddenly you can hold your attention for minutes, multiple minutes before your mind pulls away. But yeah, I was, it was wanting to think about everything. It was wanting to think about, you know, conversations I'd had um, a week ago or things I'd seen in the media, like things that I barely even knew I'd taken any interest in, but it was coming up in my head. Um, and then you've got all your normal urges, like, you know, food or sex or just anything your your mind is putting you onto. And um, that was really, really interesting to see. Um, but also, Aside from the actual mental side, um, you know, what was going on in the mind, the physical challenges of meditating, I, I wasn't ready for at all. Sitting down for that amount of time every day was so painful. Just when you're when you're sat meditating like that, your body is screaming to to change position, to get up to go and walk around, you just do not want to, I'm sitting in this position now and I, you know, I'm used to it now, it's great. Um, I, and, uh, but honestly, my back was hurting, my shoulders were hurting, my neck, my knees, my ankles, everything was wanting to, yeah, everything was in pain, my mind, my body. And uh, that is something I wasn't expecting. Uh, I had watched videos where people said that, but I thought, oh, I do a lot of yoga, I'll be fine was not fine. Um, so all I can say there, do, you know, practice sitting in meditation pose before going in. It will really, really help you out. Um, so, so yeah, that was the first couple of days of um, meditating, just getting better and better at clearing my mind, building my focus. And um, on day four, they introduced the proper vipassana. So the first few days you are just focusing on your uh, breath and your sensations around your nose. The proper vipassana, and if you don't want any of this ruined for you, I mean, I don't personally think it matters, but um, if uh, if you don't want to hear the actual vipassana, then for sure skip forward a couple of minutes. But um, it's, you're focusing on your awareness on, you're scanning through your body from the top of your head down to, you know, the tip of your toes scanning every part of your body, building that awareness throughout your body. 
and it was the most, to begin with, it was really hard, but your focus has built so much that you are able to, you know, scan down your body slowly. You know, you'd be scanning up and down 15 minutes at a time, like one scan would be 15 minutes and you could focus for that. And suddenly you're like, well, I've just made it through my whole body without my, my attention being drawn away at all. And, um, and yeah, you, we, the Vipassana is doing that over and over again until you are so aware of your body that you can just scan through in one sweep, in one breath. And it's the most amazing thing. And I'll get to that a bit later, but that was um, the introduction to Vipassana. And um, just what, what would I do during the day? So, I mean, so breakfast was, oh God, breakfast was delicious. It was oats and jam and peanut butter and toast. <laughs> <laughs> now I say that, that sounds, oh, sorry, one second, my laptop has decided to turn off. There we go. Yeah, so breakfast um, it was oats, toast, um, jam, peanut butter, which was delicious. And I just realized that's the most basic meal ever, but it was so good. And I would, you know, be so excited for that every 6.30 a.m. Um, lunch was normally a curry, vegan curry, and it was always delicious and you could have so much. Um, but I do advise not to eat too much. You know, you're, it's so tempting to just absolutely fill your stomach because you know, that is your last meal of the day, 11.30 a.m. It's the last meal of the day. And, uh, and yeah, and then you don't eat again until the next morning. There is tea at five in the evening every day, um, but that is literally a piece of fruit and cups of tea. So yeah, so, um, that you know you are fasting for a lot of the day um but yeah and then i would spend all of my all of my spare free periods just in in the um in the outdoor forest and fields and that became just my sanctuary and i was so grateful to have that i spent all my time just lay down in the forest or in the fields or you know looking at the, the animals or the leaves and I just became so appreciative of just nature and I already was but this just as the days went on just so much more and um, I just I'll talk about that for a bit now like this is one of the best things from the retreat when you remove all that distraction from your brain and of which there is so much particularly in today's world with all technology and everything that we're barely even aware of how distracted we are until you do something like this and when all of that kind of clears out you're just left with such peace and awareness of everything and i oh god i on day Four, I think I just cried looking at a, a leaf, honestly. And I know that sounds ridiculous, um, but it was the most beautiful thing. I, I just felt such gratitude for having this experience, for being able to just sit with my thoughts. And this just got stronger and stronger through the period. Like after about four days, my mind felt so clear. With all this meditating, my mind just felt so focused and so clear that I could just sit and think and not be distracted and just notice things that I never normally notice. I just, I notice just, you know, things so simple, just like insects on, on leaves and just patterns in trees and sounds that I'm normally so oblivious to, just, you know, bird call all the time, just, and just watching life everywhere. And I would just cry kind of just not not like sobbing I would just have tears in my eyes just like I'm so grateful that I can see all this again because I've been so distracted by life that I just I kind of lost track of everything that is so special and so raw and natural to life and um, that was one of the best things that came from it um, I remember on day seven, I just sat in a bench for the whole two hour lunch period. And I just thought to myself from one, I would just have about three things I wanted to think about in my life. And I could think about each one in such depth that it, depth I'd never had before. And I, yeah, just no distraction. And I just thought to myself, I haven't had that at all in my entire life. And I've tried explaining this to family who, you know, 
<laughs> a lot of people thought I was crazy going into this, and uh, you know, um, I think, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't, I, th I honestly think everyone needs to try this. But I've had people say, oh, you know, that's bad if you never get time to think. But I'm like, no, it's not in this in the same way as this. Like, there is nothing to distract you. You know that no one's going to come up and talk to you. You know that you don't even have to think about your next meal because it's going to be prepared for you by the sanctuary. Um, everything is, you know, there's nothing, nothing that you need to worry about in there. You're just there. And it's such peace, such peace. And that was just a beautiful thing to be able to think, right, I, I, I've just been able to think to myself for two hours, just sat and nothing distracted me. Uh, yeah, it's just think, have you ever had that before? If not, yeah, you'll, you'll love it. Um, so yeah, that was how I'd spend my days and um, going, so again, going back, slight tangents again, <laughs> day four they introduced the, their uh, determination sittings and these were tough. So three, uh, three one hour sits a day were determination sittings and for these determination one hour periods you were challenged to just sit in meditation and not move for the whole hour, you know, just sat eyes shut in your position and just not moving for a whole hour. And this was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Like, honestly, I've run marathons and things like that, and this was harder. Um, <laughs> in some ways, maybe I'll do, maybe I'll, yeah, maybe I'll have friends who are like, no, that's okay, I don't know. It's, it's very hard though. But um, you, yeah, you've got to sit for a whole hour not moving. And I honestly challenge you to do that now. It's the most difficult thing ever. You are so tempted to open your eyes, to look at the clock, to get distracted. And it gets so painful not moving for a whole hour. Um, your body is screaming to to move, to, to open your eyes. And you push through it, you meditate through it. And the benefit of doing that is just insane. I made it through the first one because I told myself if I make it through the first one, then I know I can do it because it, yeah, it was a very daunting prospect. And, um, and so yeah, made it through the first one. And they say that by pushing through that pain, you can then do it in your life. Like it just makes you better. It's like having a cold shower every day. You can then, you know, use that to push through pain in your life and just build resilience. So these sittings were brilliant, um, extremely tough, but that's where all the, you know, the, the, I would say the major benefits came from the meditation. Now I've kind of only talked about the good things so far. Honestly, there were some extremely tough moments in the silent retreat. Um, multiple people left. I remember in the first three days, you're not friends with anyone, but I, there was this guy who I'd always see in the, you know, the, the forest or the fields. And I could always tell on his face when I was struggling, I was like, I, I can see, you can see when other people were kind of struggling as well. And um, anyway, he left. I'm just, you kind of go into the meditation hall and his cushions were gone and he was sat very near me. And I just thought, oh my God, he's gone. Like my, my, my yoga, uh, my yoga, my son, uh, my, you know, my son at retreat friend is gone. Of course he wasn't my friend. We'd never even spoken. I didn't even know his name or what his voice sounded like. But um, you just, yeah, it's, it's very strange when people go and there are some very hard days in there. I think day five was it, despite having nice parts of it, I remember the end of day five was one of the hardest moments for me. I was thinking how, am I going to do this any longer? I don't know how to be silent anymore. This is so difficult. Um, how am I going to do another five days? Um, I remember day seven was also a really difficult day for me. I was just, I didn't know what to do with myself. I, I was just thinking, how can I be silent any longer? I need to speak to someone. I need to, um, I need to just find, do something other than stare at this tree for the thousandth time or walk this path for the ten thousandth time. <laughs> um, honestly, it gets like that. You you are just repeating everything each day. Meditate. It's wake up, meditate, breakfast, meditate, uh, lunch, meditate, walk around the forest, walk around the forest again, meditate, walk around the forest. 
<laughs> it is honestly just like that every day. Um, and some days were really hard, really hard. I didn't think I was going to make it a few of the days. Um, I don't know. I, I was I was thinking how how can I possibly do this any longer? Um, and the only thing that kept me there was just knowing that that was all part of the process. Um, so yeah, I uh, yeah two days in particular, day five and day seven were extremely difficult for me. And I think they're normally quite common days for people to find it very difficult. Time goes so slowly, so, so slowly in there. Um, yeah, you, you're count, I, I was counting away the days, but also so grateful for being there. It was honestly the biggest wave of emotions of feeling such intense peace and gratitude and then feeling such um, oh, pain, you know, pain of like, in the meditation you're, you're going so deep into your into your psyche you're seeing memories from your past that you know have caused you to suffer or you know you've caused yourself to suffer as a result which is you know all the parts of buddhism meditation um and it's tough and yeah it's uh it, it can be really hard um and it no doubt will be for everyone who does it you get the you'll get the intense peace and the the, diff the intense difficulty at the same time, the pain, and that's exactly kind of what you're there for. It's where all the growth comes. But day eight was a huge turning point for me. I remember being in the last determination sitting of the day. So this was um, seven till 8 p.m. And I was so focused. I'd been scanning my body, doing the Vipassana all, you know, the whole eight days so far. And suddenly I just, I just, I just got it. I got the sensations which, um, which they say you can achieve. And I felt just vibrations throughout my whole body, wherever my attention focused on, wherever I focused my awareness on, let's say it was my fingertips, I felt this intense vibration, well, and subtle vibrations, but still intense compared to, you know, anything before and I could feel that throughout my body wherever I focused my awareness and they say that this is you know you sensing just you know you you're, you're so aware that you can sense just energy you know to like an atomic level it was it was just um yeah a fascinating thing to experience and not everyone gets to that state but that is kind of I suppose the goal from Vipassana to reach that um I'm not going to explain the kind of the rest of the actual meditation because that's something to leave to an expert rather than myself i don't want to get it wrong but um yeah that was what i got to on day eight and the next two days after that were just so incredible knowing that i had got to this state and that that's you know and i knew kind of how to get there now and i felt so so in tuned with I was so focused by this point. Every distraction was gone. I, I couldn't, like nothing pulled my attention away anymore. I was so focused um, as long as I wanted to be um, and I could focus my attention on anything that I wanted. And I've never had that level of focus before in my life. So yeah, that was um, day eight. And the last couple of days, I was really kind of very excited for it to finish, but again, just, felt so grateful for for being there and knowing that as soon as I left I would never have that kind of peace and level of awareness again and um, yeah the last couple of days it was it was just beautiful you could see on other people's faces um, there you could just see how everyone was having that same peace you know we'd come out of the meditation hall at um, let's say 9 p.m this was late May and the sun was setting and there were loads of swifts or swallows that would fly out of the, uh, the meditation hall roof and just fly around in the sunset. And we would all just watch them and just you could just tell that this is something we always normally overlook day to day. And we were all just watching it in absolute awe of just the beauty of nature and just the present moment. None of us were thinking about anything before, after, it, it was just, total presence and awareness and peace and um, 
but yeah that's i will i will do this retreat again and i look forward to that so when day 10 came around and honestly uh, despite as i've said the great peace throughout the 10 days i was very excited for it to be coming to an end i was so proud that i'd made it to the end um we were suddenly allowed to talk and it was just incredible speaking to people and you know everyone was just so so at peace and so happy to talk with each other and share and it was fascinating hearing other people's stories of what they went through and knowing the difficulty that other people went through in there like there were moments in there where i felt so so incredibly low um or like desperate to leave absolutely desperate to leave and couldn't tell anyone else was in the same state like you just don't look at others um you obviously can't talk to each other and then to find out that other people had exactly the same was really reassuring and then also the intense peace as well um and that was really great to share at the end we we were then allowed our phones and everything and i didn't want to even open my phone i didn't want to turn it on i left it a couple of hours until i'd left because I just, I didn't, I knew that as soon as I opened up my phone, just all this distraction, everything I'd been clearing my head from would just pile back into my mind. And that is exactly what happened. Um, and that will, that's what I'd say, you know, it's been three months since the retreat and it's, I've taken so much from it. It was the most wonderful experience, which has just showed me how to dial back into that level of awareness um the the importance of meditation or what i do is yoga instead daily yoga helps clear my mind so much and i think it's so important because we are so distracted every day to a point where we have no idea and this this silent retreat showed me exactly that um we were told to keep up the meditation two hours a day which i've not done i didn't continue with and apparently very few people managed to that is a long time to meditate but i i did find the answers that i wanted in there it showed me what i want from life and that's a big part when i'm making videos again um because i've had such a big break from it and i'm being creative in other ways in my life and i'm doing all these things again which i'd felt lost from it's made me pursue all of those things again. It's made me feel such an intense gratitude for life again, for just how you know unlikely it is that we're all here and yet we are. And doing an experience like this just showed me all of that again. And you guys will have your own realizations from it. And I'm sure they'll be extremely profound and they'll help you with your lives. And I, I really just think there's no better way to get as intense an awakening to yourself as this retreat. I don't think it's possible to achieve that in day-to-day -day life um, without you know, having the silence, without removing all the distraction. And that's what, yeah, that's what made this so special. I, I really hope that this was insightful to you guys. And yeah, if you are about to do a silent retreat, good luck. Remember, it's going to be very difficult at times but it's all worth it. There is gonna be, the, the, yeah, go in with an intention, I think. Know what you want to uncover about yourself and the answers will come, the answers are all within, they really are. Um, and yeah, just enjoy the moment. There will be some really difficult times in there, but just when you're having those moments, just remember how lucky you are to get to experience this retreat, because it's, yeah it's an extremely difficult thing to you know achieve outside of it and you'll when you leave you'll be so grateful that you had that and i'm looking forward to doing that doing another one in the future for sure so um i hope you enjoyed this video i really do and if you did please do consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up I'll be so grateful and yeah and i'll see you in a future video where i talk about you know other experiences like this that i do my journey through life travel um navigating life basically but uh yeah uh, good luck going to a silent retreat and thanks for watching